then you all join hands and you circle to the south and you get a little moonshine in your mouth. You circle to the left way down in Dover, reach right out all hands over the lake, deep bow, the gents bow, and just swing that corner girl. And you leave her on the right and you circle to the left, go round. For you circle to the left way down in Dover, reach right out all hands over the lake, deep bow, the gents bow, and just swing that corner girl. And you keep this girl and promenade, you take a little walk, go round. You promenade the lady round the ring, oh boy. Now you get them back home, you get them a swing Everybody's when you go Now turn and bow to the corner of the hall Bow to your partner, that's all Hello, James. Hello, John. I'd like you to meet Mr. Nike of Pakistan. Glad to know you. And Mr. Harjono of Indonesia. Glad to know you. They're both very keen on finding out what's being done for the young farmer here in Australia. Well, uh, they've come to the right place. You seem to be having a wonderful time. Yes, it's our club social. I hope you gentlemen will stay and enjoy yourselves. Well, you bow to your partner and the lady on the left, and you all join hands and circle to the left. You circle to the left, go round the ring, now back the other way. Circle to the right around that ring, when you get home, you swing a go. Everybody swing and everybody whirl, all join hands around that whirl. Reach to the middle with your right hand, and you make that right hand star. Right hand star in the middle where you are, return it, but not too far. Now back to the left with the left hand star. Well, besides social activities and club work, every young farmer has to work on at least one project of his own. Projects? What did it mean? How does club work help the individual? Well, questions like that are best answered by example. Do you see that young chap dancing over there? Well, his story will answer you both. His name's Hal. The family were cattle people originally, but the father had an accident, and they came to a more closely settled district. Hal had to carry the farm on his own. Hello, Hal. Oh, hello, Norma. Good news, they're bringing Dad home. Oh, good. Now perhaps you'll have more time to join the Young Farmers Club. I don't know about having more time. Dad won't be able to do any work yet. His accident was serious. I've got to do what I can to make a success of this run-down old farm. You can make a better job of it by joining the Young Farmers Club. But I can't see the sense of it. What's the Young Farmers Club for? It's only a club, isn't it? And I haven't time for that sort of thing just now. Oh, if only you'd listen. Of course it's a club. Where young people interested in farming can get together. You're interested in learning all you can about, well, sheep, say. The Young Farmers Club teaches you the latest methods of dealing with them. Oh, look, come and find out all about it for yourself. Sounds all right. And you can bet I really do want to know all I can about this business. The way to make a success of farming is to learn about it, isn't it? It certainly is. All right. I'll give it a go. Good on you, Hal. So, Hal decided to join the Young Farmers Club. These clubs started over 25 years ago, when it was realized that the young people whose destinies were bound up in the rural life were not receiving enough controlled guidance or inspiration. Hundreds of such clubs have been formed throughout Australia. Activities are guided by district supervisors appointed by the state governments. Hal received his badge at one of the regular club meetings. The Office of President and other executive posts are held by junior farmer members. Among the aims of the movement is the encouragement of the qualities of leadership. Age for membership ranges from 10 to 25. And many speak with impressive confidence when called upon to address meetings. This young member, for instance, has been working on a vegetable project. Miss President, Fellow club members, in giving this lecture on vegetable growing, I do so with the hopes that you will get as much benefit out of it as I did in preparing it. To become a successful vegetable grower, it is necessary that certain rules must be followed. They are, one, early and proper preparations of the land, two, a plan so that a proper system of rotation can be followed, Three, a sure supply of water for artificial watering when needed. Four, the right varieties and types of vegetables suitable to the district. Five, the will to win and the desire to get profit and pleasure out of the work. Thank you.
The President calls on another young speaker. Miss President, fellow club members, before one can start on poultry rearing, it is advisable to look around and decide on the breed which makes the most appeal to you. The white leghorn is my fancy. Morning, Dad. So, you enjoyed your evening at the Young Farmers Club meeting, did you? It was good, Dad. It really was wonderful to see those kids, some younger than me, get up and lecture about projects. Seems good to me. I've heard a little about the work, but uh, us being cattle people, I wasn't very interested before. I want to make a real go of this farm, Dad. Long and grinding work, son, and study. Every day, every hour. No time for play. I know, Dad. But isn't it worth it? I think so. So he's talked you into it, has he? <laughs> that girl from next door certainly fills his head with ideas. Don't you approve, dear? Of course, so long as they're good ideas. I think they're good. <laughs> Tell me more about these um, projects. What are they exactly? Well, Dad, for instance, there was a girl talking about her fowl project. She was talking about white leghorns. <laughs> Project work is carried out mainly during leisure hours, according to a set program. Everyone is eligible for the district championship. A record book must be kept, setting out such details as amounts and costs of feed, the average number of eggs and their weight. In this way, our young farmer learns something of farm management, and so she's not putting all her eggs in the one basket. Back home from school to a pig raising project, and out goes the call to the best performer. Pig, pig, pig. He has plenty to attend to. He must know how to lay out a piggery, the right type of feed, how to care for the sow and her offspring, and of course, it is most essential to count them correctly. What a performer. Throughout the country, there are thousands of dairy farms playing vital parts in the pattern of our national life. Without healthy herds, our living standards would nosedive. So, by selecting the calf and cow rearing project, this young farmer is safeguarding those herds. And when the time comes for judging, the appearance of both the cow and calf, the shelter provided, and the competitor's knowledge of dairy routine will all be taken into consideration. One of the conditions is to rear a healthy heifer from birth or 14 days to 12 months of age. And this one certainly looks healthy. We are told that we live on the sheep's back. Here is someone learning how to help us keep living that way. Junior farmers get their starts on such projects with gifts from parents or local graziers who realize that the country's future lies in the hands of the rising generation. With the sheep raising project, the junior farmer stands to gain a tidy sum of money from the sale of wool. But such a return only indicates that the project has been carried out carefully and successfully. Now, let us return to Hal. With Norma's encouragement, he is bursting with plans and enthusiasm. First, he has chosen a pasture improvement project. He must select a plot and prepare it according to certain rules. But Hal already has a misty eye on the district award for the star junior farmer. So, he has a second project underway. This is the Flock U project which stipulates that he must take care of the ewes and lambs throughout the year, raising the sheep for wool and the fat lambs for the market. But modern farming is not all outdoor work, and our young hens receive a foretaste of trials to come 
when they get busy on their record books after a day in the hot sun. The keeping of record books is a vital aspect of the movement. Without a balanced economy, many farms could fall into ruin. There are many facts and figures that Hal must set down. With his pasture development project, for instance, he must record details of rainfall, the type of fertilizer chosen, the amount used. Perhaps it is the thing to send a junior farmer to sleep at the end of a hard day. But records are essential if these farmers of the future are to cope with flood and drought, famine and plenty. The completed record books are submitted to the judges when the many scattered projects come up for review. They give a statistical panorama of the project from beginning to end, from the day it started down to the final financial statement. There are 28 approved projects in all, and these record books give some idea of their scope. Modern farming methods depend to an increasing extent on science and machinery. Local farmers lend equipment for practical demonstrations. And here we see the district supervisor introducing junior farmers to the tractor, the hardy man-made beast without which we could not hope to reach our present-day output of primary products. Now here is an interesting feature of the junior farmers movement. A number of local farmers have agreed to donate a piece of common ground where a club farm may be established. But first, the members have been asked to submit a plan. It is a splendid example of young people and adults working together for the future welfare of their district. But to look at another project, and an ambitious one, the raising of beef cattle. This junior farmer has six fine looking beasts. At the end of a set period, they'll be judged, among other things, for the beef qualities developed, the extent of growth, freedom from disease. It seems our budding cattle king can see one of these beasts decked in the championship ribbons or perhaps himself crowned star junior farmer. Well, with beasts like these, he must be in the reckoning. Wheat is another primary product. These two junior farmers have been given several acres of wheat land. They're making sure that the crop will be free of disease when the judges come round. Here we are in a tree nursery. And if we could all see firsthand the care taken in raising the giants of the forest, perhaps we would have more respect for them and pause to realize their importance for shade and shelter. A group of our aspiring farmers visits the nursery to learn something of the seedlings and how they must be handled with care like all young things. Tree planting is one of the approved projects, whether for shade, shelter, commercial woodlots or purely ornamental purposes. But it's not merely a matter of putting the seedlings into the ground and leaving it at that. The ground must be prepared. And depending upon where the seedling is planted, some protection must be provided against straying stock or humans. Someday, these school grounds will be graced by a fine stand of trees, a tribute to the far-sightedness of the junior farmers' movement and the young people who belong to it. In the not-so-very-distant future, we may expect these young ladies to be the wives of the men who tend the land, its crops, and its herds. And so, under the domestic heading comes another project, the bottling of preserves. And once again, we have the record book. Here we see the Junior Farmers' Organization helping more of the rising generation over yet another hurdle. Despite all the mechanical aids to the modern farmer, where the going is rough, the horse still reigns supreme. And so, horse mastership is a project. And it includes how to water, feed and groom the ponies and horses. Every district has its annual show. And it's an exciting time for our young farmers. Some are exhibiting their cows and calves. 
while for others, it's the time they get down to work on another project, learning how to judge cattle. The general outline of the beast and its walk are major points to watch. Cattle judging plays a more important role than many of us realize. It helps maintain the high quality of our livestock. The judging teams are themselves being judged. The outstanding feature of this project is the way in which it fosters team spirit. They learn everything, down to the placing of the prize-winning ribbon. It's a great day for this junior farmer because her young bull, raised as a project, takes the honours. Another feature of Showtime is the exhibit of produce. Clubs and districts prepare their individual displays. It is a time when our young hands are able to see the parts they're playing in providing the primary needs of the nation. In all the carnival atmosphere, the junior farmers begin to feel a sense of sharing in a job well done. And let us be honest about it. What job is more essential to the welfare of any nation than rural accomplishment? But here we are, back to hell. He's finding more and more jobs that need doing. But he's getting plenty of help. Hal? Hmm? What are you thinking about? Your erosion control meeting. Oh, Hal! What's wrong with that? Nothing. Only it's all right working hard, but... Well, well you've got to relax sometimes. <laughs> Look, Norma, I'm enjoying every minute of this. I'm a junior farmer with a responsibility. That's how I feel about my work. I want to make good. You started me off on that. <laughs> so I did. Are you sorry? Because I'm not. Well, I'm not either. Only... Oh, well, there'll be a social evening soon anyway. We can have fun then. Meanwhile, on with the job. Clubs organize field days where rural problems may be studied firsthand. It's soil erosion. But what are we going to do for a site? Miss President, I'd like to offer our place for the demonstration. The field day brings members to the property Hal now looks upon as his personal responsibility. Not only junior farmers, but their parents, other farmers, and interested people of the district. They come from miles around. And in a holiday mood, the young hands learn how to cope with one of the most deadly threats to the land, soil erosion. It won't be so very many years before these vast acres of Australia, these pasture and grazing lands, pass into the care of the young men and women of Hal's generation. A nation will depend on their knowledge, their industry, their initiative for its prosperity and survival. Though the process is carried out on a large scale, there is nothing highly complicated about it. The main idea is to terrace the land so that the water is held and allowed to sink into the soil instead of running down through the thinning grass and so scoring it with the ever-deepening furrows of erosion. In this way, the junior farmer comes to learn about the land he works, its strength, its weakness, and yet its immense possibilities, not only for material and personal gain, but for a contented way of life. There are many ways of coping with the erosion problem. Here we have contour ploughing, its patterned lines giving sinews to the soil. It's been a successful day for Hal, and a long day. He's only just starting to realize that he has come a long way since his first few visits to the club meetings. Meanwhile, he just can't forget his projects. They have opened up new horizons for him and for his family. The big day is coming up for Hal. 
the district supervisor and the judges arrive to inspect his pasture improvement project. With expert eyes, they take in the quality of the grass and clover, watching for the presence of disease or weeds. Then comes his second project, the dual purpose U. And so, one after another, the projects are judged, until the local club assembles once again. This time to hear the announcement of the star junior farmer. And guess who? Well, there he is. So there we see the result of one junior farmer's efforts. The efforts of one young hand, though urged on by his parents and by his friend Norma. But then, such encouragement is one of the aims of the movement. Congratulations, son. But Dad, you here. Well, the doctor said he could try. Gee, that's great. I wanted to hear what they said about you. From now on, I'm going to be about more and more. But not now. We're going back home. I'll give you a hand. No, son. We're all right. You're staying for the party. Everybody swing a girl, do an alamen left with your old left hand, and a partner right, a right and left hand. Half full style and a half full suit. Yes, a little girl that I came with you. Promenade, you go round the ring, while the roosters crawl when the birdies sting. Get them back home and you give them a swing. Everybody swing a girl. Now hold your hands and circle to the south. Get a little moonshine in your mouth. Now reach to the middle with the right hand star. Back to the left for a left hand star. Men reach back to the girl behind. Hey, pull it through, you're doing fine. Now pull and throw and you get them a swing or promenade with a pretty little thing you promenade right off the floor that's the lot there is no more this is the answer to your questions this is the story of the junior farmer movement the clubs are playing an active part in the future of rural industry which means that they're playing a vital part in the future of Australia No, Norma? Yes, Hal? I think I'll drench those sheep tomorrow. Oh. Oh. 